Okay, so I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. Now, as you can see, in the middle of working on the uh, Ravel uh, Schlingmann Unimog uh, kit, but uh, wound up taking a forced break because of uh, certain medical issues in my family, but fortunately uh, that's all on the mend, but a um, couple of rocky weeds. Anyway, uh, that's moving in the right direction. So, I came down here and wanted to uh, get back to work. And, you know, I was looking at my paint rack here, which I had made for myself when uh, I started getting, you know, back into the whole hobby thing and started the channel and whatnot. And uh, as you can see, if you'll allow me to move around here a little bit, you know, I've got paints over here. I've got more paints over that way which i can't even get on camera so you know i have clearly outgrown my little rack plus uh i slapped this together with uh <laughs> glue and, a, and a, a few uh small screws from some uh scrap wainscoting i had uh that, that happened to be in front of me but uh, as you may be able to see from the one leg here it's starting to separate and um, I was going to repair it, but then I figured, why bother? Because I've outgrown it anyway. So that's going to be the subject for today. We are not going to build some plastic. We're going to build some wood. So I will now segue to my garage and we'll get to do uh, some woodworking. So going to be a short video, just going to show you quickly because it's not a complicated structure but you know if you have just a little bit of uh, woodworking skill some basic tools uh, table saw circular saw which I don't think are really exotic tools <laughs> they're they're pretty uh, pretty much the the basic basic things you need if you do any kind of woodwork um, and a drill you know and sander you know that's optional you could hand sand but um, you know, it's not a finished grade product, so it doesn't have to be super fancy. It just needs to be functional. Yes, capital F, functional. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's going to be the goal for today. So, like I said, I'm going to hop up to the garage now and take the camera with me and get to work up there. And then when I come back down, I'll have the finished... Um, paint stand and the paints will go on there and we'll see how that looks okay as always thank you for watching please do subscribe like uh hit the alert button you know all that good youtube stuff and um hopefully soon i will have this build done i'm about halfway through although it may not look like it because there's just bleh, pieces all over the place but it's uh it's shaping up and it's a good build but I will save that discussion for the Unimog build video, which will be the next video to come up. Okay, so that's that. And off to the garage I go. Okay, so gonna build a paint rack. So what I did, I went downstairs, I looked at my old paint rack to figure out what sizes I need and after doing all that, I'll show you how I'm going to map this out. So I just have a rough piece of spare wood here. And good work, woodworking practice. I drew my own level line on the bottom. Never trust the store cut because they're rarely square. I want a two inch setback at six inches. So I measured up with my square and over two inches and just drew a line. So this will be the lean of the angle. Now I know I measured my uh, Tamiya wash and my Tamiya extra thing because they're a little bit bigger bottles. They're about an inch and a half deep and actually the shelves on my old paint stand are about an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is map out my first line. So that's one and a half. Now the wood I'm going to be using is three quarter, um, 
it's actually pi one by six, but you know, it's never quite what they say. So it's basically three quarters. So I'm gonna measure three quarter for the thickness of the wood and over an inch and a half for the depth. And that will be my first shelf. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure up two and a half because that is the height I used for the existing shelves and actually works pretty well. So there we go. Three quarter for this one. That will be my second shelf. I want to come up two and a half for a third shelf. Now you notice I'm out of my line here. That's no problem. I'll just extend that a bit. There we go. Another three quarter inch for the thickness of the wood. Now the wood I'm using is complete overkill for the load of the paint jars, but paint bottles, I should say. And excuse my head if it's getting in the way. I've been working outside all day, so yes, I look like a bum. <laughs> And then I am going to square that off. Now I don't need the full thickness here. So I'm going to measure up like so. It doesn't need to be perfect. And that's gonna be my end piece. Shelf, shelf, shelf. And then I left enough space, three quarter inch for a backing plate so the paints don't fall off and it's good to go. Like many things, it's not super smooth, it's not super precise, but it's just for the hobby table. So what I'm gonna do is cut this guy out using my circular saw, table saw. Then I will clamp this to a blank piece of wood and just mirror the cuts. So it makes life a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll start making some shelves. All right. Okay, so I made my cuts for my end pieces. And like I said, I cut this one, just held it over this one, and mapped the cuts. Again, rough edges, who cares? It's just for my hobby table. I'll put some felt feet on the bottom of these when it's done. So there we go. There are our ends. Wow. Oh, it's really crappy. I think I'll hit that quick with my belt sander. Always the perfectionist. No. All right, so here is the next piece of scrap pine. So I'm going to cut, I want my paint rack to be 26 inches wide interior shelf space. So that would be excluding the thickness of this, the two end pieces. So I'm gonna set my table saw for an inch and a half depth. And I'm just gonna run off three strips. One, two, and three. Join those between the shelves. And then I might have enough for the backing plate. We'll see. If not, I have other scrap wood. So that's the next step. All right. Okay, so T, <laughs> not part of the shelf building. So we've got our three shelves now. Rip those off. And you can see how I mapped on the piece. So I'll go one, two, and three. Then I just need a backer plate. And that I am just gonna cut from this one by 12 piece. And that will mount on there like so. And then it's assembly time. So this will also be 26 wide to match the shelves, a couple of screws, a little bit of sanding. <laughs> you know, I built, oh, two captain's beds, two entertainment centers, a couple of shelving units. I built quite a bit of furniture in my house. So, and not that I consider myself a carpenter, but there's a lot you can do with just a few simple tools and a little bit of geometry. <laughs> so 
you know, just like with my, uh, when I do my kit builds, I look for simple solutions to things because they are usually nice and safe solutions, not safe in terms of safety, which, you know, got my blade cranked up here, so, <laughs> but safe in terms of you eliminate a lot of sources of possible error, which makes your work not only more efficient, but easier to get to your end goal. And if with a little planning ahead of time, nobody's going to look at it and realize the simple things you did to create what looks like potentially, you know, not so simple a structure. This is simple, but, you know, for building entertainment centers, captain's beds, you know, it's basically boxes and boxes. So if you can build a box, you can build that stuff like that. Just like if you can build one model kit, you know, pretty soon you can build any other one. So, lecture for the day, as I like to say. My hands are off because I'm standing to the side. <laughs> so, lecture of the day. So, I'm going to cut that and then start assembling this. Okay. Okay, so now I have my pieces. Back plate, shelves, end plates. Shelves mapped out. Together they go, and then the back plate. All right, I'll do some JPEGs as I assemble, and next up will be the finished product. Let me see, how long have I been spending on this? Just as a dead reckoning, eh, about 45 minutes so far. So, probably take me, you know, between cleaning up and everything, an hour and a half, and this will be done. So, a little quick woodworking project to help the hobby area. Alrighty, I'm going to start assembly. Okay, so construction is all done. I took my shower, <laughs> watched a little football. Now it's time to do the switch over from the old to the new with all that space. Yahoo. Okay, so I'll be right back after I do that. And there we have it in place and stacked up. Now, today was a teachable moment. <laughs> uh, no, just not, not to be too silly, but, you know, I designed this and, and built this and I figured, oh, that'll cover everything. Um, it was a little misleading uh, how much stuff I had because I had some paints over on that side of my table. I had some paints over on this side of the table to the point of... It's important to try to stay organized with your stuff. Otherwise, with paints in particular, <laughs> you can end up having duplicates of stuff and not even realizing it. So um, the paints that you see that are doubled up, you know, some of those are duplicates. And uh, well, hey, there they are. I guess I won't be running out any time soon now some of them i have doubled up because i will be going through quite a bit of those when i get back into uh, building the tanks with the interior detail because i'll be using a lot of that for airbrushing but um in any event uh you can see things are a lot neater and that makes me a lot happier uh one of the things i want to show you which i guess i should have took a picture of before side area here that was all cluttered up right to the edge of the table here with stuff and now that i have the paint rack i was able to reorganize things so 
you know, when I moved to paint silver, it wasn't just doing that. I kind of reorganized everything on the table because, uh, you know, you know how that goes. Move one thing and uh, you end up moving everything, at least for me. So <laughs> there we go. So that's looking a lot better as well. And on this side, uh, it's still kind of a mess because the uh, Unimog is still in the building, uh, you know, in the building phase. So those parts are still all over the place. But it's nice to have a little more room. And there's the project and it's done. So, um, you know, try to stay as organized as you can with your stuff. Now, I don't like to pile up on paints and to the point I was trying to make before of until I got myself organized here, I didn't realize I had all of this, uh, you know, the, especially the little testers bottles, they seem to just multiply around you <laughs> as you go from build to build. Um, but you know, it's nice. It's organized now. And I think if you, you know, if you get into this and you're doing kit after kit, you'll have a much more enjoyable experience with your building. If you have yourself organized some way or somehow, obviously this is not the only answer or the only solution to that. Uh, this is how I chose to, to tackle it. Um, I'm comfortable doing woodworking. Like I said, I've, I've built all sorts of furniture and even though this is not finished grade, uh, it's just a, a slap bang project. Well, there you go. It does make a nice difference. So that's that. I won't be buying paint for a while, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to wrap this up now. So once again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing something, as I like to say, a little bit different, uh, you know, do a little woodworking here. And, uh, as, as I've pointed out in, in other builds that I've done, you know, with, with this hobby, with any hobby you do, yeah, any hobby, anything creative, never feel that if you're doing one thing that it can't carry over into something else that you're doing. So everything creative complements itself, you know, so just enjoy what you're doing and whatever skills you have, uh, bring them to the table, no pun intended, you know, and, and, and make the most of it. So they're your skills use them. Alrighty. So that's all I'm going to say until we get back to the completion of the Unimog. I will be back then. All right. Enjoy your hobby.